you somewhere. <laughs> My phone is off, I admit. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, this weekend we celebrate the beautiful feast of the Epiphany. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are set to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. We will own on the Holy One, you will own on the Lord, you will own on the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Lord God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendid Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds covers the people. But upon you the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. 
Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nation shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Apha, all from Sheba, shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people of other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then King Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the many things lost over the last several decades, I think, is the Christian understanding of the sanctification of time. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's an old Latin phrase that speaks to the truth of God's presence in time, et verbum caro factum est, which means the timeless, eternal God entering into time. And that is, after all, what Christmas is about, the Feast of the Incarnation that God so loved the world, he chose to become a finite being in time in order to manifest his love. And there is no greater act of humility than the incarnation. And this weekend, we mark another moment when the beauty of the incarnation is manifested in time to the world. And we celebrate this great feast, and I would say underrated feast, of the Epiphany. And we're all familiar with the Epiphany story, the narrative of the three kings who journey from afar to Bethlehem under the guidance of a star in order to discover the presence of the divine. And the three kings, the Magi, they were educated men who sought meaning and truth in life. And so they go on this quest, not to exalt themselves, but to find the true light to which the star was pointing them towards. And in this search for truth, they discover the true meaning of truth in the presence of an infant. And this is why St. Matthew tells us that after they encountered Christ, they departed for their home countries by another way. So when they had that encounter with a newborn king, when they discovered the truth of God in their midst, that changed their total direction in their lives and ultimately gave them deeper meaning and purpose. <clears throat> so the Feast of the Epiphany continues this beautiful meaning of the Incarnation and namely to recognize, to be grateful for, and to celebrate the personal impact the Savior has on us. And the word epiphany, literally translated, means a revelation, a manifestation, a showing. So this feast is, by extension, a feast of Christmas, invites us to appreciate what God is constantly trying to show us and about the reality of who God is, that he is not a distant, foreboding God unconcerned about our lives, but rather, he is a God who wants to be a part of our lives and to draw us closer to him. 
and to manifest his truth for us. And this is a beautiful reality for us to consider. And we have just begun a new calendar year, thanks be to God. And it's always a time to start fresh, setting goals and desiring deeper change. And I propose that this year, 2021, be a year that we seek the star who is Jesus, the star who gives meaning and the purpose of our lives. For life is not about exalting ourselves, but rather fighting that light of Christ that reveals himself to us, that is, if our eyes or hearts are open. And the star of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, is meant to lead us to true fulfillment, ultimately to lead us to heaven. <clears throat> and in seeking out this truth is in that journey in which ultimately we find sanctification for ourselves. And key to realizing this is that we must recognize that we are not in control of everything. We are meant to be humble in following our Lord, to trust him like those three magi, to kneel before him, offering the gifts that he has given us in return. And we must also be open to his will, and sometimes that will might be contrary to what we want. That's a lesson that we learn over the course of our lives. But the epiphany shows us that we do have a divine purpose. That is, ultimately, if we strive to connect ourselves to God, if we're open to what he wants to do in our lives through prayer, and that we freely say yes to his plan. So Almighty God used a star to reveal this truth, and he gives us the star of our faith, the deposit of faith has been passed down for the last 2,000 years to lead us to the direction of truth and true peace. And it's only embracing the truths of our faith can we have a true, clear spiritual vision to help us living out our daily lives. So yes, we celebrate the beautiful reality that God became one of us and that he did so to shed light in the darkness, to help us to recognize that he alone is the one that can lead to true peace and fulfillment and ultimately to eternal life. So it's not about doing things our way, but rather being open to God's way. We must die to ourselves, for all have to do this day in, day out, and recognize that we are in the need of the Savior. And like those three kings who journeyed from afar, no matter where we're at in our own spiritual lives, let us make a resolution to put Christ first this year. It doesn't guarantee that we won't have difficulties and challenges, and yes, the world continues to be a dark place, but if we focus on Christ above all else, then truly we have that light to guide us. And for this, we should not fear, but rather give thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> And now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, <coughs> begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. For him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, he became man. <clears throat> he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life or proceeds for the Father and the Son. <clears throat> for the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. And now on this Feast of Epiphany, we place before our Heavenly Father all our needs and petitions. For all who spread God's word throughout the world, that they preach with conviction and minister with love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all national leaders, that they seek justice, respect, the dignity of human life, and freedom for all peoples above all else, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering, the sick, and those oppressed in body and soul, 
that they find freedom and healing in God's Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Lionel Drunikev, Diane Kalachik, Muriel Rivet Frank, Patricia Martuthi, and Roger Bernard, that they celebrate eternity with Jesus in the presence of the living God, we pray to the Lord. And let us entrust these petitions to Mary, the mother of God, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The second collection this weekend is for fuel and utilities. <laughs> my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without that end we acclaim. <laughs> most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and one with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially at this Mass, we remember Diane Palachik who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, life, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. <clears throat> Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, with whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Holy the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the The Lord is King, let earth rejoice, let many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him, justice and right are the foundation of his throne. Body light Christ. shines forth for the just one, and a joy for the upright of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, My you Christ. just. To the memory of his holiness, give thanks. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Deacon Rick and the entire staff of our parish, I'd like to extend to all of you once again a very happy and blessed new year. Again, we hope and pray that 2021 is a better year than last year. We think it shouldn't be, but who knows? Who knows what will happen? Uh, just a reminder, we have parish calendars located in the back of both churches, so feel free to take one home. And also the 50-week club is beginning this year. Uh, there'll be a further explanation in next week's bulletin, uh, but also just keep uh, your eyes peeled for that as well if you'd like to join. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May only God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits from above the world, seeking the rule of souls. 